Hello, today we're going to talk about oscillographics. Oscillographics, which is graphics made on a screen using an up and down control and a left and right control. You might have seen those crazy videos of graphics made by music plugged in to an oscilloscope. Fabulous! But the problem for me is I may have a handful of oscilloscopes over here but none of them have the left and right control. Well, no need to fear because you can pretty much do this with any CRT screen. If you search up on YouTube, there's hundreds of videos of how to turn a TV into an oscilloscope. If you happen to have a Vectrex lying around, which is a vector display games console from the 80s, obviously loads of people do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's even easier. This is exactly what an artist called Andrew Duff does. And he's made quite a comprehensive set of instructions of how to turn your Vectrex into an X, Y, Z screen thing. By plugging his Vectrex up to a modular synthesizer making a complex sound, he's able to use the Vectrex as a lightning quick etcher sketch. Here's a couple of examples of pictures he has made using these Vectrexes. Ooh, oh, that's lovely. Ooh, very nice. Oh, that's like a pretty snowflake. That's all well and good, but for me, sadly, I haven't got a Vectrex. But I do have TVs and screens that don't really work anymore. Oh my god, these old screens. They're not, they're not light. Ooh, look at the back. It's a beauty. The great thing about old school appliance manufacturers is they're not selfish dickheads that make you buy new things when something doesn't work. These are easy to service, including two little plastic screws that make the back just simply fall off, sort of. Oh yeah. And no, the ease of serviceability in this thing doesn't stop there. There's two tiny little clips that when you open it up, you can easily get in there so you can work on it without even having to take it apart. Now imagine if Apple or something were this nice, the world would be a better place. The first thing to know when it's open is you shouldn't touch it, especially not with your tongue. <laughs> this massive glass thing can hold up to about 30,000 volts of just built up charge. So you don't want to touch anything in here until you've discharged it. Please don't take my word for it, check some other videos on how to discharge a CRT, because what I'm using is a relatively short screwdriver and some wire. And we're wrapping the wire around the screwdriver. Not like that. Ooh. So this end, we've got to attach it to the ground of the chassis somewhere. Step two is you find the rubber plunger that is on the back of the CRT screen. Poke the thing between it. You might hear a couple of pops and crackles. That would be the TV discharging a large amount. So let's pass it over to the commentator and let's get going. Thanks very much, Sam. Here we've got a mid-70s Finladio Granada. A beautiful TV for the time. Inside and out, it's absolutely beautiful. So the first thing Sam has to do is locate the deflection coils, which steer the electrons from the back of the CRT tube to the front, making a beautiful, vivid, technicolored image. Currently, it looks like he's having a little bit of problem. Ah, oh, bingo, he's found them. Revelant the glory for a second. These coils act as electromagnets. One coil steers the electrons up and down, the other one left and right. Mix them together and you can reach any part of the TV screen. Now it's time to locate the wires that connect these coils to the circuit board down below. Oh, I think he may have spotted it. Now he's going to remove them from the circuit board and then give it a little snip snip. He will have found four wires. That means two wires per coil equals two coils. The next job is to find out which wire is which. That's when we get this hoser technology cable tester and work out the continuity of each of the wires. See, bleep, bleep, bleep. Okay, those two don't seem to be connected at all. So they must be to separate coils. Oh, bingo! It looks like he's successfully located each of the separate coil wires. So if we look at here, there's the red and the brown, which is connected to the first coil, and then the blue and the green are connected to the second. Well, bloody done, old chap. Now it's time to get those wire strippers and get those old coppers bare. Give them a bit of tinning with some solder. And then you get these jack sockets, which are used to connect to everything else. You connect the first jack to the brown and the red wire, and the second one to the green and the blue. It doesn't matter which way round the wires are, as long as each jack is connected to separate deflection coils. Oh, Sam, slow down, you're moving too quick. Oh, so he's, he's now making a front paddle, he's spraying it, and then, oh, he's doing a little doodle. 
Oh, that's beautiful. That's absolutely lovely. Now he's going to mount the panel on the front of a TV. This panel is used to connect the jack socket so they're connected to the deflection coils for easy access at the front of the appliance. Now it's just a case of putting it back together, pop it on that back there, just like that. Beautiful. Give it a little tight and twist it around and then celebration! Oh my God, it's lovely to celebrate when you've done something. Oh no, now it's a moment of truth. Is it going to work? Oh my god! So here we go, it's complete. The X and Y direction coils have been patched directly to the front of the TV. So you can plug in things to steer this little dot in the middle. Lightning bolt etch a sketch. I'm going to plug it into this Eurorack modular synthesizer. X, Y, Woo! Another thing to really quickly add is this is a massive TV. I just couldn't get signals loud enough, so I plugged it through this amplifier. You can use any hi-fi amplifier. You know those kind of amplifiers that your granddad's like, oh, that was worth a lot back in the day. Just plug it into that and then plug it out to this, and then the volume will be how big it is. <laughs> So that's just a little introduction into what you can do with Oscillographics. A list of the Eurorack synthesizer modules I was using is in the description. I also asked Andrew what modules he would recommend. He mentioned the Cascade kit, which is available on Funk, which is to scale it and move around the voltages. He also recommended to look for a chaotic oscillator, something like a Make Noise DPO or a Woggle Bug. I'm definitely going to look into this more because it was pretty fun. I was stuck here doing it for like an hour and I've got to edit through that now. A longer video of my lighting in bolt etch a sketch jam is available on my Patreon along with a load of other fancy things. And remember, if you're thinking of doing this at home, do your research because you don't want to get zapped. Andrew also organises the Brighton Modular Meet and that's coming up in a couple of months. There's some information on that in the description as well. And yeah, I've been Look Mum No Computer. Don't forget to subscribe and all that. Cheers, Jazz. Oh, 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 oh,